Welcome back to The Comprehensive Dentist. My name is Dr. B, and in this video, we are continuing our discussion of what makes a quality image. In the last video, we talked about proper exposure, detailing how aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance affect exposure. If you haven't watched that video or need a refresher, you may want to check that video out now and come back to this video. Otherwise, stick around. Having a good focus is like being able to see clearly. If you wear glasses, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The glasses allow you to see more clearly with everything being in sharp focus. The same is with a camera. The camera can be in focus or out of focus. Some parts of our photo can be in focus or out of focus. In some cases, you may even want the entire photo to look in focus, and in some cases, you may want only parts of the photo to be in focus. So how do we adjust focus? What factors affect our focus? This video will talk about two main factors that affect focus, depth of field, and camera stabilization. Depth of field represents an area of the image with sharp focus from the front to the back of the image. Depth of field is sometimes defined as an area in focus, a third in front of the subject of focus, and two thirds behind the subject in focus. Three factors affect depth of field, aperture, the focal length of the lens, and the subject distance from the camera. We have discussed aperture in our previous video on proper exposure. Specifically, we looked at how adjusting the f-stop affects how open or closed the lens diaphragm is and how it also affects how much light enters the camera. A higher f-stop or aperture results in a narrow opening and less light enters the camera. A lower f-stop or aperture results in a larger opening and more light enters the camera. Well, another consequence of adjusting the aperture is adjusting the depth of field. A lower f-stop will allow more light into the camera, but it also results in a decreased or small depth of field, meaning that a small area of the image will be in focus. In contrast, a higher aperture or f-stop allows less light into the camera and also results in increased or greater depth of field, meaning a larger area of the photo will be in focus within the image. And if you look at a good portrait image of a person, you may notice that the background is slightly blurry or out of focus, but the subject is in focus, drawing your eyes to the person. This effect is on purpose and controlled by adjusting the aperture. To create an out of focus background, you have to set the aperture to a lower number or a lower f-stop. Now in dentistry, when we take dental photos, we typically will shoot our images at higher f-stops with a higher depth of field. We generally want more or all of the mouth in focus. Full face shots can be an exception though, and these are typically shot at lower f-stops with a decreased depth of field. Aperture is going to be the primary way we affect the depth of field in our dental photos. Another way to affect the depth of field is by using different lenses with different focal lengths. The focal length is the distance between the camera sensor and the optical center of the lens. I use a 100 millimeter focal length lens in dentistry, meaning the distance from the camera sensor and the optical center of the lens is 100 millimeters. If I compare this lens to a smaller focal length lens, like a 50 millimeter focal length lens, the smaller 50 millimeter lens will have a greater depth of field compared to the larger 100 millimeter lens, if they both take a photo at the same f-stop. This means that the 50 millimeter lens will have more of the image in focus than the 100 millimeter lens at the same aperture. When I shoot dental photos, I only use my 100 millimeter lens, so this factor has minimal effect on my ability to control depth of field. How far the subject is from the camera will also affect the depth of field. The closer the subject is to the camera, the more shallow the depth of field compared to the subject being farther away, shooting with the same lens and aperture. Again, this factor does not contribute to the depth of field very much when shooting dental photography because 
For most of our shots, especially intraoral photos, we are closer to our subject. So the depth of field is one factor that affects focus. The other factor that affects focus is camera stabilization. If the camera is moving, it will likely result in a blurry photo. Camera motion is the primary cause of blurry images. It would be best if you learned how to make yourself as steady and stable as possible. A tripod will create a very stable platform for taking photographs, but it is not very practical when taking dental photos. A good technique is to plant your feet into a broad stance, keep your arms tucked in, and have a solid, comfortable grip on the camera. All right, so that wraps up our discussion of sharp focus. If you learned something in this video, please hit that like button. In the next video, we will look at the last factor that affects a quality photo, and that is correct composition. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.